So we're at the fiber termination uh, part of the process. We have our preloaded connectors that we've injected our epoxy into. They've been degassed and such. And we have our prepped fiber lengths. Uh, we have one jumper here with the two ends that are prepped according to the manufacturer's uh, template. The Kevlar, the buffer, and the jacket have all been stripped to length. So we're pretty much ready to go here as far as termination goes. Um, did want to just highlight the oven that we're going to be using. It's a high volume oven for production and it's a very high precision oven that holds the temperature uh, at a very uh, a very tight range of, uh, of temperature. It also has a timer with stop and start features and alarms and uh, this helps you keep your, your cycle time efficient uh, throughout your process. Uh, another nice advantage to the oven is that it does have the vertical tray for single fiber connectors and a fiber management system that allows you to keep the fibers coming straight down, uh, exiting straight out of their uh, cavities, straight. Um, that can be removed very easily. And if you want to do a multi-fiber connector where a horizontal cure is preferred, then you would just simply slide in the horizontal tray for MT, MPO, MTRJ, or any array style connector. It also has uh, some nice little fiber clamps to hold the fiber down to position. So it is a very versatile oven as well as a high precision uh, production tool. We're going to continue on with the vertical tray, which just slides right in. With the vertical tray, it does come with these optional inserts, which are handy uh, in the termination for single fiber uh, connectors. What it does, it does offer protection. It offers both a protection of the fiber that's exiting out of the connector, and it also helps uh, create contact between the actual metal tray, the aluminum heated tray, the insert, and the ceramic ferrule. It's, uh, it's really important to keep contact um, between the surfaces to ensure a, a full cure of the epoxy. So what I've done here is basically just inserted the ferrules into the solder, being careful not to uh, you know, bump the epoxy that's already on the nub of these connectors that uh, I put the bead on with, uh, with our, prior, our prior injection process. So basically these are ready to terminate. At this point I'm going to slide my components up, or at least the crimp sleeve, up near the fiber end. I do have a crimp tool uh, that's also recommended by the particular connector manufacturer. They recommend a, a particular crimp size, which is very important to ensure that you do lock the Kevlar uh, correctly around the crimp post. And this is where a lot of these strip links uh, really uh, come into play and in how important they are. Um, we need to know that, you know, there isn't an over an, an excess of epoxy uh, protruding out of the fiber because we don't want it to, to bump uh, or exit this uh, fixture and, and bump on the bottom of the oven. Um, also excess epoxy or excess fiber, sorry, can create a, a, a flow or, or pull out the epoxy from the connector if there's too much of epoxy. So you want to avoid um, you know, having an excess uh, length of epoxy coming out. So that said, um, I'm going to start to feed my fiber into the back shell of this connector and just kind of feel around. The nice thing about this little holder is that it does have a, a, a little window here where you can see that the fiber has actually passed through and is exiting the front of the connector. So the other important part of the, the cable prep is that you know the Kevlar needs to be at a certain length. If the Kevlar were cut too short, short, it would not quite reach the crimp post and you might not capture all of the Kevlar around the post. Um, alternatively, if you had this ver much too long, the Kevlar would probably get stuck between the housing uh, and not look uh, aesthetically too pleasing. Spread out the epoxy, uh, the Kevlar, sorry. so that it kind of covers the full perimeter of that back post. You don't want all the Kevlar 
just stuck on one side. It'll result in a stronger connector if we have it uniformly placed around. And at that point, I just slide the crimp sleeve up into place. And we have a connector that would look like that. The only thing that we're missing at this point is to crimp it with the recommended crimp die. So basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold the connector. I'm going to crimp this with a manual crimp tool. Uh, we can also, we also have the option of using a, a pneumatic crimp tool which also adds to repeatability, repeatability and uh, uh, takes away some of the operator uh, error. So I'm going to use the last crimp die on here, 178, which is the recommended uh, manufacturer crimp uh, diameter for this connector. And I'm just going to give that a crimp right there. On some connectors, it is necessary to also do a crimp on the bottom part of the crimp tool, on the crimp die, sorry. So that's what I'll do here as well, is a little crimp on the bottom. And at this point, it's ready to put in the oven. These two connectors can be co-located right next to each other so that fiber management is easy. And we can just hook this up over the top here. According to uh, the manufacturer's uh, recommended cure schedule, we might leave this here for anywhere from 15 minutes or up to an hour depending on the epoxy type. At which point uh, we would take, the alarm would go off, we would take the connectors out and uh, let them rest, cool down for a few minutes, and then go to our cleaving process.